Hey guys, this is Aaron. And I'm Bryce. And you're seeing our mugs once again because there's another Fusion 360 update. And in this update, we have a productivity enhancement. What do we got, Aaron? Well, uh, when you hit the S key on the keyboard, it's going to open up a toolbox. Uh, and the toolbox is going to give you commands that you use most common. And it's customizable in every workspace, whether you're in the sketch, the freeform, or any other workspace. Nice. Let's take a look at it. In this update, we have added a customizable toolbox, which will increase any designer's productivity in any workspace. Simply by hitting the S key, we can activate the toolbox, which will place the box where your mouse is located. Once the toolbox is open, we can search for commands. The command can be activated by selecting it, or the command can be added to the toolbox by hitting the arrow to the right of the command. Once the command is in the toolbox, we can reorder the commands by dragging and resizing the toolbox. The toolbox will change whether you are in a sketch, modeling, freeform, or different workspace. The toolbox gives us access to the commands we use most often right at the location of our mouse. In this example, the toolbox is used in the simulation workspace, as well as the modeling workspace. In addition, when I forget where certain commands are located that I seldomly use, I can use the toolbox to search for that command. Another update is we have cleaned up the user interface for the parameter window. Now the parameters or variables that are created manually are located above the model parameters which are created while designing. Also, tips have been added to every command. Select the I when the command is activated. Now information on the command is located at the top and tips can be expanded to give tips on how to use the command. Next, Control shift s can be used to create a recovery point to come back to during the design process, but it will not upload a new version to the cloud. Finally, when Fusion 360 is attempted to be closed while an upload is in progress, we are now given a progress bar for the upload process to the cloud. So now let's talk about some updates on the simulation front. With this rotor head assembly, what I wanted to check was how the weight of the blades caused displacements in the shaft. In my previous attempt, you can see that I included the entire blade model, which added quite a lot of complexity to the mesh and interred the calculations. After the November release, I'm able to run this more efficiently and accurately due to new capabilities. So let's clone the existing study to reuse the work I've already put into this, then omit the blades. To include their weight, I can use the new point mass load. All that is required is that I select the faces the blade touch, determine the mass, and the center of gravity. A mass without gravity won't have much effect, so that brings me to another new load consideration, gravity. Gravity can be applied in various directions and magnitudes, and the symbol display makes it simple to understand whether it's being applied properly. Solving this will only take a fraction of the time compared to the last run, and as I start to visualize the displacement results, you'll see another update. The results are viewable across the volume of these bodies. This is related to the volumetric meshing happening in the background. Definitely helps me see what's happening, but it also sets Fusion 360 up for other study types, like thermal studies. Hint, hint. In the rendering environment, we have added several different types of physically correct wood appearances. These appearances are procedural appearances that will update correctly when geometry is changed. We have added different appearances for finished, unfinished, painted, and stained wood. For each individual appearance, we are given control over grain direction, rings, rays, bumps, pores, and colors. We can also use texture mapping control to change where the end grain is located. Notice as I rotate the triad around, the grain travels through the faces. This would usually take expert control to match the grain across multiple faces. Now let's take a look as we render this wood appearance. Also in the rendering environment, we can also flatten the ground. This will take the spherical HDR image and flatten the ground, which turns the HDR image into a hemispherical environment. Previously, it was difficult to have your design appear like it was sitting on the floor. Now, with the flatten ground option, we can lock the environment to the ground. Once the ground is flattened, we can alter the location and scale of the environment to better meet the size of our model. These options in the rendering environment will help achieve a more realistic image. Man, did you guys see that wood appearance? I think can make anything look realistic. Yeah, it's crazy how it follows every little nook and cranny of the model. Yeah, when you make design changes or chamfers or fillets, it's going to go across all those faces. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so what's up next? We got drawings coming up next. We're going to see a single dimensioning tool and GDMT. Sweet. Let's check it out. Now let's make a couple drawings from this rotor head assembly and show you just some of the idea station generated updates we've incorporated in the November update. We'll start with the drawing for this vertical support and by talking about one new option you'll find. The new option is the ability to hide or show trailing zeros. 
This will enable you to control exactly what you're after, whether that be to indicate a number of significant figures for measurement purposes or to simplify the view. That said, adding dimensions has never been easier. For my toolbox, you'll see me selecting to use the new single dimension tool. This tool can add diameter and radius dimensions, linear dimensions, aligned dimensions, angular dimensions. It's dependent on what you select, and now I can rapidly add multiple dimension types from one tool. Our GD&T capabilities took a major leap forward with the addition of datum identifiers and feature control frame symbols. This crucial information will help ensure this vertical support is made and inspected properly. With that almost done, let's jump into another portion of this design, the swash plate. The swash plate is a sub-assembly of the rotor head, and to help demonstrate its construction, I've already put together a simple animation. After the November release, I am now able to reuse this animation in a drawing. This will make our balloon drawings and parts easier to identify per the parts list. Now let's really make this drawing pop by leveraging the new shaded views. Just double click on the existing view and from the properties change the display type to one of the two shaded view types. This drawing looks incredible and was so easy to make. Next we have some great enhancements in the November update to the CAM workspace. The engraved toolpath has been added to engrave detailed geometry such as text, logo, sketch geometry, and vector art. This new toolpath raises and lowers pointed tools to vary the width of the cut. Here we engrave a metal shaft with identification labels and numbering. In another example, engrave is used to produce an artistic floral pattern. Power users will be excited to know component and derived pattern have been taken out of beta. While derived pattern toolpaths require a manual intervention like the circular pattern and linear pattern by selecting the given points, component pattern is far more automated. Simply create a new pattern, select the component pattern type, and select a seed component. The pattern does the rest, automatically finding duplicate instances and comping the toolpath. Like all the pattern operations, you have full control over the sequence of operations to ensure manufacturing efficiency. My personal favorite is Order by Tool. This ensures all operations are completed with a given tool before spending valuable time on tool changes. Well, I can see why people are so excited about VCarve. Yeah, you can engrave text, logos, all sorts of stuff. Well, thanks for attending today, guys. Uh, we want to give a shout out to Greg, who made that model that you were seeing us. It's in the gallery. Check it out. It's so detailed. It's insane. Also, check out our YouTube channel for some quick tips. All of them will make you design faster. Cool. Well, thanks again. Have a great week. Until next time.